Good morning, loves. I'm here today to talk about my experience at Chef AJ's Live Your Best Life conference, which happened in Sacramento, California on January 15th, 2023. This conference featured a variety of incredible speakers. There was Dr. Roseanne Oliveria. Dr. Goldhammer gave a lecture called Getting Healthy Fast on the benefits of fasting. Dr. Doug Lyle and Dr. Alan Goldhammer had a Q&A session, which I'll be digging into. And Dr. Neil Nedley gave a lecture called Nutritional and Lifestyle Interventions for Managing Lifestyle and Depression. I learned some pretty interesting things from this conference that I hadn't heard in other venues before. I heard Dr. Lyle say stuff I'd never heard him say before. This was my first time going to a conference hosted by Chef AJ, and I could not have been more impressed by how she had organized it, put together, kept it running smoothly. Chef AJ is as energetic and vivacious as she appears on her YouTube channel and in person she is just magnetic. Really her energy kept all the things going and when you, whenever you looked at her she was all just running around and coordinating everything. I so appreciated all the effort she put into the conference and for gathering such a remarkable group of people. Of the attendees, in the beginning they asked people to raise their hands to indicate their ages. I think probably 90% of people raised their hands when the presenter asked how many are over age 50, and then also a big portion, maybe like three fourths, raised their hand when they asked how many are over 65. So certainly I was in the minority there, probably the youngest person at the conference. Which brings me to a topic, which is that people often ask me, why the heck are you here? Like, why are you so interested in, in this healthy lifestyle stuff when you don't even need to be I don't know, just why? <laughs> and for me, uh, it's something I could probably expound upon in a future video, but it comes from witnessing a lot of people go through the decrepitude that comes from enduring a lifetime of lifestyle diseases. And it also comes from personal experience with health challenges. And of course, as a worker at True North, I would see everyday debilitation and strife caused by completely preventable diseases. So to me, it's a cause very near and dear to my heart. And when I saw that Chef AJ was putting on this conference in Sacramento, I thought I have to go. Dr. Roseanne Oliveria explained how just one alcohol drink increases cardiovascular disease risk in men. Someone asked how, why salt is so bad for us and she explained how salt increases osteoporosis Salt is a major factor controlling the amount of calcium in the urine and what is lost from the bones. And because calcium is important for bone strength, too much salt leads to a decrease in bone density. So a high salt diet increases the rate at which calcium is lost through the bones. She also explained how your diet should be about 20% fat maximum, how your LDL cholesterol should be 30 points or below, if, especially if you're at risk for cardiovascular disease. Then we had an inspiration panel, which was comprised of six fabulous speakers. They were ranging from age, I think like 56 to 87, roughly. And the 87 year old was Al Schmidt, who I've, I've had the pleasure of meeting in person before at True North. Very inspirational speaker, very witty funny. He has a website called stayingalivewfpb.com. I recommend going to it and hearing his incredible story. He has also been interviewed by Chef AJ before. In this panel, the people talked about how going plant-based, for example, got rid of their back pain, since lower back pain can be caused by issues with the cardiovascular system. They talked about how they loved getting back their freedom in life, how this eating this diet is not that restrictive because it actually gives you so many freedoms, freedom to hike, to travel, to do what you love the most without pain. And Al Schmidt, the 87-year-old, talked about how going on the plant-based diet has improved his cognitive function. He said that his wife, Dottie, always thought that he was an ass. Now she thinks he's a smart ass. And Esther Leverage on the panel said some pretty inspiring words. She said, decide you won't put anything in you that hurts your body or heart. Make that decision. She asked, what are you worth? Are you worth the best? If so, then put in your body the best. That's what it deserves. Dr. Goldhammer then gave his own lecture called Living Healthy Fast. I helped design some of the slides in this lecture, so it's always exciting to see him present it. Even though when I see him put the slides up, my brain goes, oh, oh, why did I make those choices? And I just want to make the slides better. But in the future, I'll do that. And Dr. Goldhammer said some things like, limit your feeding window to eight hours, 
Don't eat for three to four hours prior to sleeping. Make sure you sleep at least seven to eight hours and delay breakfast until completing vigorous exercise. Dr. Goldhammer has given this fasting lecture a million times, so you can go online and find it if you want to know more details. We had a vegan soy-free, nut-free, gluten-free, SOS-free lunch catered by Chef Angelique Miller of Zest Kitchen. Lunch was incredible. So typically when I attend conferences or just go out in general, I'm used to having to scavenge for food that's compliant. But at this lunch, they prepared at least two to three pounds of food. It was uh, sauteed veggies, zucchini, mushrooms, bell pepper, carrot, kale, lime, garlic, oregano, and thyme and sliced baked sweet potatoes on a bed of brown jasmine rice garnished with sliced radish, toasted pumpkin seeds, and sliced jalapeno. This is also known as the Chef AJ Bowl. It was divine. The portions were so massive. It was, everyone when they picked up the containers, like, wow, this is really heavy, because it was really heavy. And most people were not able to finish their lunch and it ended up being my dinner too. It was great. Uh, I was so thankful that, that this, was an event where they actually provided an abundance of healthy food. I'm not, I'm not used to that at all. And there was also a cherry salsa made of cherries, onion, red bell pepper, and cilantro, which actually tasted just like a tomato salsa to me, which is interesting. And then there was a tropical parfait made of mango, pineapple, gluten-free oats, coconut, ginger, cinnamon, and medjool dates. Yum! After the lunch was the highlight of the whole conference to me. This was the Q&A between Dr. Doug Lyle and Dr. Alan Goldhammer. These two have been best friends for over half a century and they have incredible rapport. They are so funny. The session opened with a question from somebody about how to deal with their neuropathy and chronic pain. Dr. Lyle took this question. He answered that chronic pain is the most difficult problem he comes across in his clients because there simply is no resolve of it. He says, however, that they can become happy as they learn to accept the loss of the functions they used to have. And this is a process of grief. It can take months, years, but eventually people can come to the acceptance of their chronic pain or their terminal illness. So people can become happy despite their pain, but there is that grieving process to get through it. And having gone through that own process myself over many years, almost a decade of just like feeling like a total loss of identity and having to figure out lots of new ways to do things, I can really empathize and resonate with what he was talking about. The kind of depression and extreme sadness that comes from being like, wow, I can't do all the things I love. And then, you know, finding new things to love and do. So there was also a question about ADHD in boys, how to manage it. Does a whole food plant-based diet help with managing ADHD? Dr. Lala said, a plant-based diet he does not think has a significant effect on ADHD. He explained how ADHD, especially in young boys, is common because back in the Stone Age, the boys were more like the hunters and the females were the gatherers. And as hunters, the boys had to be more attuned to little subtle changes in the environment. So that's why, you know, if you force a guy to sit down, or girls too, like if you force anybody to sit down in a chair in a classroom for eight hours a day, it's really hard to focus. Dr. Lau said, definitely do not medicate a kid on ADHD. And for advice on raising kids in general, he said, don't give them psych meds, don't give them dairy because it definitely causes autoimmune issues later, and also purify their water. Why purify their water? Well, it turns out there are nasty things in water that are even nastier than we could have imagined. What was most shocking to me was when Dr. Laos that fluoride is something that's probably very damaging to people. He said that since he was young, like 20 years old, Dr. Goldhammer would rag on him about this and that and fluoride and 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 Dr. Lau would say like, this is too much. Why is, why is everything not okay anymore? But Dr. Lau says that over the years, he slowly realized that Dr. Goldhammer is right about most things if not everything. And he said that a few months ago, he read studies dug up by Dr. Greger, which talked about the harms of fluoride. And he found that pretty convincing. He said that the studies show that fluoride in water is a neurotoxin. It's significantly damaging. The impact on the IQ is a drop of five points, which is a difference from the 50th percentile in IQ to the 40th percentile in IQ. I was shocked because Dr. Lyle is a lot more lax than me when it comes to avoidance of substances. 
And for him to be this scared of fluoride made me kind of, you know, really <laughs> get taken aback and I'll have to look more into this. But I do agree with him that eventually Dr. Goldenhammer seems right about everything, as annoying as it is. Someone asked a great question. Can we ever overcome the pleasure trap? Dr. Lyle's blunt answer was no, we can never ever overcome the pleasure trap. He said, the pleasure trap is an inherent relationship between people and their environment. We have different motivations for things depending on the biological and value of the resource. For example, heroin, our motivation for it, is extraordinarily high because it fools the system. Any resource that we think is very high value, we make it a high priority to get. And then Dr. Lal gave the example of harvesting peaches. He says, if it's peach season, you smell the peaches, you taste the peaches, you're going to crave them every day. And then even after the peaches go out of season, you're still going to crave them and think about them. And that's because you're kind of, you know, you, you think it's still in the environment because you've acquired it recently, even though the peaches are no longer there. So the only way to stop craving a substance that you shouldn't have is to get it out of your environment. Stop consuming it. You're going to go through that withdrawal phase, but if you get it out for at least a month or so, you're going to stop craving it. The memory of the taste, the smell, the feel of whatever it is, is going to diminish and go away and you're gonna forget. You're gonna forget that the peaches existed. So Dr. Lyle said that the pleasure trap never goes away. It just goes quiet to the extent that your environment is quiet. And Dr. Goldenhammer rounded that out by saying, the moral of the story is, if you're an alcoholic, don't work at a bar. <laughs> Another little tidbit on moderation, Dr. Goldenhammer said, we don't tell alcoholics to drink alcohol a spoonful at a time. That doesn't work. Dr. Lyle then got a dating question the person was asking, does my partner need to be whole food plant-based? And Dr. Lyle said, definitely not. They do not need to be. He said, what matters is the content of their character. What's their big five? The big five is a five factor model of personality. You can Google it, lots of resources on it. Dr. Neil Nedley was also phenomenal. He explained how people are less fit today because they spend so much time on screens. Our society has become an indoor society. We now spend about 91% of our time indoors and COVID definitely worsened the mental health epidemic because people spent so much time indoors. Also, he said, physical fitness is better for your brain than it's for the body. It really got me thinking about how exercise increases BDNF, which is brain derived neurotrophic factor, which is neuroprotective. Very good for staving off cognitive decline as we age. And he also talked about in his program, which I don't know much about it, but I guess it gets people healthy. He said that getting people off their caffeine helps get rid of their anxiety. And after two weeks of being caffeine free, the participants can't even eat watermelon at night because it's too stimulating. It keeps them up. I thought that was incredible. He talked about how bad marijuana is for people. He said that something that the news has not talked about is how all the mass shootings that have lately happened in America have one thing in common, which is that all of the perpetrators were on marijuana. And he explained how marijuana just increases anxiety so much. He gave a great Thomas Jefferson quote, don't bite at the bait of pleasure unless you're sure there's nothing underneath. He also talked about how for BDNF levels to go up, people should fast more and also eat more lightly in the evening, front load the food in the daytime. He said the first therapy he recommends for insomnia is a medical grade light box first thing in the morning. And after seven days of doing that, then the circadian rhythm is reset. For people who have issues with waking up at like 3 a.m. in the morning, they should have exposure to the light box at least 12 hours before they go to bed, so like in the mid-afternoon, and this will help regulate their sleep cycles too. Tryptophan, he explained how large neuroamino acids compete with tryptophan to cross the blood-brain barrier, and carbs derived from whole foods tend to reduce the stress hormone cortisol. Carbohydrates induce muscles to uptake large neutral amino acids, thereby improving tryptophan access to the brain. Therefore, carbohydrates increase brain tryptophan absorption and thus increase serotonin levels. So following something like the keto or Atkins diet, which is a low carbohydrate, high protein diet, causes a reduction of tryptophan and therefore serotonin in the brain. He said that the ironic conclusion is to not chow down high protein sources to boost either tyrosine or tryptophan. This is something like turkey, which we all think is high in tryptophan. Instead, he says that lower protein diets result in more amino acids in the brain. So he emphasizes that we should take carbohydrate rich sources of nutrition. What about high cholesterol in the brain? Well, he says that patients with major depression tend to have significantly higher cholesterol levels than healthy adults. 
Depressed patients with higher cholesterol levels have poorer prognosis for treatment response, and lowering cholesterol improves depression and mood and lowers impulsivity. And there are three foods he especially warns against, which contain oxidized cholesterol byproducts. They are one, custard mixes, which are combinations of high fat and high sugar ice creams, two, pancake mixes, and this is because pancake mixes are basically have a lot of powdered up eggs in them, which are extremely high in cholesterol and three Parmesan cheese and lard. They contain equal amount of oxidized cholesterol byproducts. Seafood is also really bad for you because of the level of mercury in it, especially fish. He said that the connection between eating fish and mercury levels in the body is so strong that researchers seeking to determine mercury exposure among groups of people often look at only one dietary factor fish consumption. So then you talked about choosing the best diet. There's the keto diet, paleo diet, Atkins diet, then there's the whole food plant-based diet, which he says is best for the brain. In that kind of diet, there is no arachidonic acid, no cholesterol, it's high in antioxidants, and there's better tryptophan and tyrosine intake. Win, 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 win. Dr. Neil Nedley said that he may be accused of cherry picking the best diet, but he says it's hard to cherry pick when there's only one cherry that the research reveals. Intermittent fasting. Dr. Neil Nedley also talked about intermittent fasting. This is something that Dr. Goldhammer also promotes. Goldhammer talks about eating within an eight hour window and fasting 16 hours. Dr. Neil agrees. He explains how intermittent fasting reduces oxidative stress in the brain, increases BDNF production, protects the brain by reducing oxidative damage. The list of fasting benefits just goes on and on and on. And in fact, Dr. Goldhammer and Tasha Myers, who's the research director at True North Health Foundation, are working on a book about how fasting can save your life. It's going to come out sometime about summer, we hope. About nutrition and mental health, Dr. Neil Nedley read two quotes for us from a very reputable allopathic medicine journal. One was, now's the time for the recognition of the importance of nutrition and nutrient supplementation in psychiatry. The second was nutritional medicine should now be considered as a mainstream element of a psychiatric practice. Wow, so a conventional medicine journal is saying this, pretty cool. And then finally, I love how he cited this study which was actually conducted in Southern New Zealand, which says that eating a plant-based diet results in eudaimonia. Eudaimonia is kind of this philosophical concept of realizing the, like peak happiness, not just surviving, but thriving, achieving full vitality. That study said that lifestyle interventions have an increasingly apparent role in physical and mental health, and among the most effective of these is plant-based diets. Another thing he addressed, how do you gain weight if you're underweight? Go nuts. As in, eat nuts. He says nuts are nature's most calorically dense food. If you're underweight, eat two to three meals per day with a half to one cup of nuts per meal. He emphasizes to eat almonds, pecans, walnuts, hickory nuts, and macadamia nuts. Personally, I, I'm i not as into getting into the nitty gritty of like which foods exactly to eat. I, I follow, I try to follow what Dr. Lyle says, which is to not major in minor things and to not get too caught up in obsessively like chasing down nutrients, but use with this information what you will. Overall, I had an absolutely wonderful time at the Live Your Best Life conference. Such an inspiring place to be. There is a difference in meeting these people in person and hearing their stories, experiencing the energy, eating the healthy food, hearing from speakers live about how their lives have been utterly transformed and saved by the power of plant-based nutrition. A raffle went out. I was lucky enough to win a prize, so I went up to the table and I grabbed this book, Dean Ornish's Program for Reversing Heart Disease. It's not the most recent book, but I think that there is great wisdom in these tomes of the great doctors that we all love. Chef AJ, thank you so much for all you do. You are a light shining in this world, and I could not be prouder to know you. I will continue producing content, sharing whatever I learn and glean from the world. If you have any questions about anything, feel free to ask me because I just gave a super high level overview of all these random things that happened at the conference. It always helps me continue being motivated to make stuff if I know people are actually like looking at it and benefiting from it. So if you have any feedback or comments, feel free to leave them. Feel free to subscribe for more information and to visit my website, michellesend.com for more resources. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you have a wonderful day. I will see you around. Bye.